Hey Jetty Rockers, welcome to Jetty Rocks Fishing and I'm Mike D. Today we're going to do another segment of tips and tricks and we're going to be talking about the six most delicious fish that you can catch yourself either from shore or in a small boat in the intercoastal waterways or the near shore reefs. So stick around y'all, there's going to be some good information in this video. <music> that we're not going to talk about in this video. We're not going to be talking about the redfish because these guys are hammered. I mean, everybody in the world goes fishing for redfish. And yes, they're a good eating fish. They're not bad at all. But you're only allowed to keep one in some areas of Florida. Some areas you're allowed to keep two. You know, it's got a little uh, slot limit on it, 18 to 27. So we're not going to really talk about them because they're, in my opinion, they're not really good to target for a food species to put in your freezer or to, you know, to feed your family because they are hammered really hard and you're only allowed to keep two. The second is the trout. Speckled trout, we're not going to be talking about them even though they are an excellent fish. They're absolutely outstanding and they're a lot of fun to catch, but they're hammered real hard as well. I mean, a lot of people target this fish, you know, with good reason. They are good eating fish, but the regulations are starting to change and I've been hearing a lot of talk about the regulations are going to get really strict here soon. So we're not going to talk about them, and we're also not going to talk about snook. Because they're hammered, and with the weather conditions sometimes, it kills a lot of the snook in some areas, and then you get red tide in some areas that just destroy the snook population. So we're not going to talk about those as well. All right, Jenny Rockers, let's go ahead and jump into it. The first fish we're going to talk about is the triple tail. I mean, this fish is awesome. This is my favorite fish to target inshore and near shore. It's also my favorite eating fish you know, that you can catch in shore, near shore. It is outstanding. It, personally, I think it's one of the best fish you can target and eat. It's awesome. You're allowed two per person. You got an 18-inch minimum size limit. There is no max limit on them. And let me tell you, all you need is two. If you catch two a day, that's all you need. I mean, that's enough to feed your family for that day and a couple days to go because they can get really big and they're really meaty fish. And how you target this fish my favorite way is just some live shrimp, free line with a one out hook, with a leader about, I don't know, about maybe two foot long, 20 pound test fluorocarbon, and I target anything floating. You got floating buoys, or excellent places to catch triple tail. You can see weed mats offshore, they are excellent to catch triple tail. Inshore, crab pot buoys are awesome. You get a lot of nice triple tail and crab pot buoys. You also get them around mangrove shorelines. You can also get them under docks and around pilings. Uh, if you have channel markers in the river, a lot of times they'll sit behind those channel markers and you can catch them there. Live shrimp, small crabs, or small little bait fish. They're an excellent fish to target. And as far as eating, beautiful white flaky meat. You can cook them in a bunch of different ways. My favorite way is on the half shell, you leave the skin and the scales on, you put it on the grill, Put any, any seasonings you want on it. You can't go wrong with it. It's absolutely excellent. It is awesome fried. It is awesome baked. It, you just can't mess this fish up. It's excellent. So for all you guys out there, if you haven't been trying the triple tail, check them out. You know, learn a little bit about them. You know, watch some of the videos. I got quite a few videos on triple tail and just target them. They're an excellent fish for the table, y'all. All right, guys. The number two best tasting fish you can target, target inshore or near shore is kind of a two part thing. The snapper. Your mango snapper or your lane snapper. These fish are outstanding. The mango snapper was my favorite fish to eat for a very, very long time, most of my life, until I started getting turned on to the triple tail. And the triple tail took it over. But you cannot go wrong with mango snapper, and they're everywhere. I mean, you're allowed five inshore, they got to be 10 inches. Offshore in federal waters, they got to be 12 inches. And they are outstanding. I mean, and they eat a bunch of different baits. I mean, you can catch them on live shrimp, you can catch them on dead shrimp, you can catch them on mullet, you can catch them on 
various different types of little bait fish, little maharas, little pinfish, mud minnows. They're excellent fish, man. They are incredible fish. Um, you can find them around jetties, around docks, around mangrove shorelines and oyster beds. Offshore, you can find them around rock piles, natural reefs. Virtually everywhere you can find this fish. Brown bridges, they're everywhere. The only place I haven't actually ever caught a mangrove snapper is in the surf. And they're very easy to rig for, guys. You know, you can just rig a little fish finder rig, a little weight, about an 18-inch leader, a little one-aught hook for the smaller ones, the little inshore fish. If you're fishing offshore, you actually want to, you know, beef up your tackle a little bit because these things get really strong and they know how to cut you off. So if you're fishing for the inshore mangoes, a little small, I'd say anywhere from 10 inches to 17-inch fish, just a little one and a half ounce weight, about a foot and a half liter, a one or two aught hook with some live shrimp, live mullet, maharas, mud minnows, any of those. If you're targeting them offshore, you know, herring, dead herring work really well. Uh, grunt chunks is my absolute favorite bait to use for mango snapper. You just catch those grunts offshore, you chunk them up, put a chunk down, outstanding. That's my favorite bait. As far as eating, this fish is incredible. I mean, you can fry it, which is outstanding. You can grill it on the half shell. You can grill it with no skin on it. You can bake it. You can broil it. I mean, this fish, is, it's endless. I mean, it's just a very good eating fish. It's a high quality fish, and it's very easy to target on your own, guys. It really is. So if you haven't targeted the mangroves, and you haven't thought about fishing for mango snapper, check them out, because they're one of the best tasting fish you can eat, y'all. All right, guys, the third best tasting fish that you can catch near shore or inshore is the pompano, the Florida pompano. This is the most popular fish in the state of Florida. It is outstanding. It is by many the best tasting fish you can eat in Florida. A lot of people think it is, there's none better. Um, but there's three in my list. But uh, you can catch these fish in various different ways. You can catch them in the surf using a double rig or a pompano rig, you can get those pretty much anywhere, or you can make your own. Uh, use sand fleas, live or dead sand fleas, pieces of peeled shrimp, uh, little pieces of uh, clams, um, fish bites, which is an artificial bait that uh, you can buy just about any tackle shop. It's a flavored scented little piece of plastic basically, but it works really good. And also, these wobbler jigs. Yeah, this is my favorite color, pink and white. And my second favorite color, chartreuse. These little wobbler jigs are outstanding. I mean, they're awesome for pompano. And uh, places that I like to target pompano, my favorite places are creek mouths that dump into a main channel. Um, I love the creek mouths on a fast current. I love it. Outgoing tide is my favorite tide for pompano. You also find them around the jetties. You find them in the surf, like I've already mentioned. You can find them around bridges, and they're just a very versatile fish. They're easy to find, they're easy to fish for, and they're great for the table. They're outstanding on the table. And as far as the meat goes for the fish, it's a pure white meat. It's opaque. It's nothing like you'll see in almost any other fish. It has a very solid color to it. It's white. Sometimes it has a little bit of hit of pink in it, but most of the time it's pretty much a white fillet. It's a very firm fillet. It is absolutely delicious. You can do it on the half shell on the grill, which is my absolute favorite way to do it. Some people like to fry it. Uh, people like to broil it. And some people like to bake it. Some people bake the whole fish and it's really good. They're a really good fish. If you haven't targeted the pompano, do some research and target them. I have a couple videos out there and you can find all kinds of videos on pompano on YouTube or on the internet. I mean, it's a very popular fish here in the state of Florida. So if you haven't targeted them, you guys give them a shot. You won't regret that either. They're an awesome fish, y'all. Before I forget, back on the uh, um, pompano, you're allowed six fish per person, and it's 11 inches to the fork. That's the size limit. So you can keep plenty of fish. There's a lot you can take home for the family. If you get into them really good, especially if you got two or three people with you, I mean, then they keep really well. They keep really well in the freezer. What I like to do is keep the skin on them, skin on them, put them in a, a Ziploc bag, put some water in there, and it works out really good. All right, guys, the number four best tasting fish you can catch yourself. 
I'm going to say is a sheep's head. Can't go wrong with a sheep's head. They are outstanding. And they're very plentiful, especially in the winter and the fall. They're pretty much everywhere. Um, they're very easy to catch. It has little tricks to them because they have their little they're bait stealers. They will rob your bait before you even realize it. But basically, sheep's head, you can get around bridges, pilings, anywhere there's rocks, uh, jetties, offshore on the rock piles, natural reefs, wrecks. These fish virtually all over the place. And once you get into them, you can get a limit pretty quick. The limit on a sheep's head is now it's eight. It used to be 15. They moved it to eight now. And they got to be 12 inches overall to keep. Uh, eight fish is plenty. Plenty for the table, you guys, especially if you're getting into big sheep's head. And they get, they get pretty hefty. I mean, I personally have caught one over 11 pounds. And I've caught a lot in the five, six, seven pound range. So they're a very hefty fish. They're very good to eat. And the best way to target them for me is with uh, fiddler crabs. I like to use a little fish finder rig with a short leader, a one octopus style hook, and you can use an anchor rig, you can use a fish finder rig. Some people even use jig heads, and some people freeline for them. And very versatile. This fish you can catch them in very different, various different ways. So you can check it out on the internet, YouTube, watch some of my videos, you can watch some videos by Rad Reeling. Um, Kvar Tech Media, Kyle for a while, just to mention a few. These guys have some really good sheep's head videos. And uh, Salty Kayak, back in his a couple years ago, with some of his older videos, he has some really good sheep's head videos. So check those out, guys. And um, you can also catch them on sand fleas. You can catch them on uh, mud crabs. You can catch them on shrimp. Shrimp's heads works really good for them. Um, you can also catch them on the blue crab knuckles. If you take a blue crab and where the feet, uh, the legs go into the main body, just take those little knuckles out, put a hook in them. Those knuckles work really good. As far as the flavor for sheep's head and the ways to cook it, fried sheep's head is about the best you can get. It's one of the best fried fish you can get. It is absolutely outstanding. It's one of my main staples for my family. We eat a lot of sheep's head. I do a lot of sheep's head fishing in the wintertime. That's one of the main fish that I target throughout the year. And, uh, they're outstanding. They keep well in the freezer. Um, you can bake them. You can broil them. Fry them like I already said. You can put them on the grill on the half shell. You just do a whole bunch of different things with them. And they're very, very, very good fish to, to target. Um, the next fish we're going to talk about is a fish that honestly I have a hard time catching sometimes. They elude me most of the time. But when I get into them, I'm ecstatic. I absolutely love catching this fish. I love eating this fish. This is Amber's favorite fish to eat, and that's the black drum. They are outstanding. They are very good eating fish. They have a main diet of shellfish, so you can just imagine what the meat tastes like. I know a lot of people say, oh, they have worms in them. All fish, all species of fish at some point or time may have worms in them. So you may go through years catching pompano and never catch one with worms, and all of a sudden you get one with worms. And same thing with black drum. I've been catching black drum my whole life, and I think I've only caught two ever that have worms in them. And they were very, and they were larger fish. One was over 30 pounds. The other one was in the high teens. So the smaller ones, which is what I like to target, you know, the ones between 14 and 24 inches. Those are the ones that I like the most. And um, you're allowed five black drum per person. And the size of them is 14 to 24, with one over 24 that you can keep. And they're just an outstanding fish, guys. I mean, they're kind of hard. For me, they're kind of hard to target, but there's a lot of videos out there that you can watch that can give you a little bit more insight on how to catch them, how to target them. But how I like to fish for them is with live or dead shrimp on the, on the bottom around bridges or around the jetties. And usually when the current's moving pretty good. Um, I also have caught them on crabs. I've caught them on blue crabs, or smaller blue crabs. I've caught them on mud crabs. I've even caught a couple on feather crabs. Very fun fighting fish. I mean, this fish pulls. This fish will give you a, a run. They're really good fighting fish. Um, as far as eating, you can fry them. You can bake them. You can grill them. Just about any way you want to do it. Just like any of these other fish I'm mentioning in this video. The... Options are endless when it comes to cooking these kind of fish. They're 
you just can't mess them up. None of the fish in this video can you actually mess up. They're just a really good eating fish. All right, guys, the last fish we're going to talk about is another snapper. And this fish, I love this fish. If you watch my videos, you know I'm a big fan of Lane Snapper. I know there's some other YouTubers out there. I'm not going to mention their names because they know who they are. Don't really like the Lane Snapper because they say it's too soft. Um, if you bake this fish, yeah, they can tend to be a little soft, but it's still excellent. It's still very good. My favorite way to eat Lane Snapper is either on the grill, you cook the whole fish, or you can do it on the half shell or fried. This fish is outstanding. And lane snapper have to be nine inches and you're allowed 10. And usually I don't keep a lane snapper unless it's at least 10 or 11 inches long. And there was a video I did a couple weeks back where my buddy Justin and I went out and we limited out. I mean, I caught 10 lanes, he caught nine because he also caught a mango. And you only allowed 10 snappers all together. So, they're a fun fish to catch, and when you find them, you can catch a lot of them, and they're a high-quality fish to put on the table for your family. And the best way to catch them fish is, for me, is live shrimp. Live shrimp on a fish finder rig with about an 18-inch leader, a one-aught hook, a one-aught circle hook if you're fishing offshore, a one-aught octopus style if you're fishing inshore, because you can catch them both inshore and offshore. And they're just a lot of fun to catch. I mean, you use light line to catch them. If you've seen a couple of videos, I have quite a few videos out with me doing a light tackle offshore, mainly targeting the lane snapper. And live shrimp is my absolute favorite bait for them. Summer, she catches them on dead shrimp a lot, and she also catches them on squid. And I've caught some really big ones, like two to four pounders, on grunt chunks while I was fishing for mangrove snapper or red snapper during red snapper season. This fish is the last one in this video, but this is a fish that is absolutely fantastic. It borderlines sometimes being my absolute favorite fish to eat. It really does. Because there's been some times I've fried some up and I've just sat there and like, wow, this is just some of the best tasting fish I've ever eaten. Lane Snapper is a really good fish, so I hope you guys, if you haven't targeted them, you go and give them a shot. You know, I try to give you guys some different fish to target and to, and to eat. Take some pressure off some of the more popular fish, the redfish, the trout, the snook. I mean, these fish get hammered. I mean, everybody in the world fishes for these fish. And it's getting to the point now where the FWC and the government is just going to hammer us with regulations on these fish. So I feel that we need to kind of take the pressure away from them a little bit, start fishing for some of these other fish that a lot of people don't really target that are just as good, if not better, than those fish to eat. So, hope you guys, you know, are with me on that and you understand where I'm coming from on that. Alright guys, well I hope you all enjoyed this video. I mean, I actually enjoyed making this. There was a lot of information in this video. And I hope you guys found it informative and valuable. And uh, I hope I brought some light to some other fish that maybe you haven't thought about. Or maybe you've just caught here and there, targeted every once in a while, but you never actually really pursued them. They're really good fish, guys. Every one of them in this video is just a very delicious fish. And uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and I want to thank each and every one of you all for subscribing to my channel. You guys are awesome. And if you like videos like this, please in the comment section let me know if you want me to do more videos kind of like this or if you just want me to stick to the catching videos and the catch and cook videos. And your guys' opinions really means a lot to me. So let me know how you feel about stuff like this. Because I don't do a lot of these kind of videos. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that do a lot of these kind of videos and I've also often wondered how people really uh, consider them, you know, how they take the information in, do they like them or they just blow it off or whatever. You know, there's some YouTubers out there that I actually get a lot of good information of. One of them is JC from Rad Reeling. I love his videos. He's got a lot of information videos and videos like this, and you just get a lot of good stuff from it. So let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know how you feel about these kind of videos. And until I get to see you all again soon here on the water, Tight lines, y'all. Hey, Jerry Rockers. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'd like to invite you all to go follow me on my Facebook page at Jerry Rocks Fishing and also my Instagram page. I also have a JRF apparel page, which will send you a link to my Teespring page where I have some cool shirts and some mug. I appreciate you guys very much. But check out the description in the bottom of this video. I'll have the links. Tight lines, Jerry Rockers.